Hey there, some of you asked for a more technical video on how to hook things up to the Centroid Acorn board, so I'm going to take a couple of minutes and show you what I have hooked up to mine and try to give you a quick walkthrough on how I did it. So first of all, the disclaimer, I am not qualified to offer electrical advice to anyone, so take everything I tell you with a grain of salt. This is how I did it. It doesn't mean that it's the way that you should do it or that it is safe at all. It's just how I did it, so I'm showing you what I did. Uh, number two, the videos on the Centroid website are great. You should check them out. Uh, number three, there's a gentleman uh, with a YouTube channel called Marty's CNC Garage. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. He is really good with electronics. He has a lot of machines, and he makes really nice videos on how to do things with the Centroid Acorn board. So check out his YouTube channel. Uh, it's really good. I go to it all the time for help, and I, I send him comments almost every day right now asking for advice, and he's just a really nice guy, and he's, he's doing a really great job putting good instructional videos out there for the Centroid Acorn board, so check that out. Also, the wiring diagrams that come with the Acorn board are great, so make sure you look at those. They are on the Centroid website. Um, this one that I'm looking at right now is Acorn Connections to Leadshide DM Series Stepper Drive. That's pretty, pretty similar to what I'm, I'm doing, so I'm using this one. All right, uh, so we'll, we'll begin with the end. So what do I have here? I have, in this setup right now, I have motors working. We have motors working. We have an e-stop wired up. That's working. We have a switch that's simulating a limit switch. That is working. I have a relay hooked up that is simulating a coolant pump. So when I manually Turn the coolant off and on, you can see. You can see that is working. Also, I have an encoder hooked up, and when I turn that, it is giving the Centroid software uh, spindle input. So this is 8,000 pulses per revolution, so this is super accurate. Uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so all that's hooked up, so let me tell you a little bit about how I accomplished it. Now I will try to go uh, quickly and uh, hopefully touch on everything that you want to see to give you a flavor of how I'm doing this. So I have 220 volts coming into this breaker, 220 volts coming out, feeding these terminal blocks. So that's leg one of the 220, that's leg two of the 220. This is neutral and this is ground. So there is power coming into the setup. Then I have three power supplies that are driving the uh, lead shine motor drivers. So these are DC switching power supplies. And I have down here, I have a dual voltage power supply. Um, V2 is 24 volts. V1 is five volts. So that's tucked down there. So there's power, AC power coming in, uh, DC power supplies. Uh, connections to the acorn. So the first one I'll point out is I'm bringing 24 volts from this power supply up to the 24 volt uh, DC connection on the acorn board. I'm also bringing the common connection from that power supply up to the, the common terminal of the acorn board. Um, that provides the power the acorn board needs to operate. Naturally, I have the uh, Ethernet connection plugged into my computer. That, I think, at this point kind of goes without saying. So what's the first thing we want to talk about? The first thing probably should talk about is connecting the e-stop, right? That's, that's like the most important button on your CNC machine, e-stop. So how did we do that? Uh, well, if you refer to the Acorn schematic, you will see that to get your 
inputs working, you need to give them 24 volt DC. So you bring 24 volts up around here and you input it here to this side of the uh, board. And it's, it's pretty much that simple. So over here, you can see we have 24 volts. I have the wire going around and we are taking it to the 24 volt in right there. That's what that's doing. Um, my e-stop is on input 8, and it's labeled on the board as such, input 8. So this yellow wire is sending 24 volts all the way over here to the e-stop, and then I have this black wire coming all the way back around to common. So there's your first connection. We are coming out of input 8, 24 volts, all the way to here to the e-stop, and then uh, black wire returning to common. That will give you your e-stop. The second connection, and actually, you know what, while we're, while we're doing that, let's look at the wizard here really quickly. So we'll exit CNC 12. Okay, so you can see I have input 8 set to e-stop, normally closed connection. So that's how you typically wire your e-stops as a normally closed connection. All right, second thing we'll talk about is the limit switch. The limit switch is coming out of input Oh boy, I really can't see this. Input one. So there's a wire, 24 volts, coming out of input one, coming into here, and then the black wire is going all the way back to common. So basically the same setup as the e-stop. So the 24 volts comes out of input one to the switch, and then the black wire comes back to common. Um, and that looks like this. Up here, it's input one, first axis home limit, normally closed. So that's how that's set up. So there's the limit switch. So we have e-stop, we have limit switches, uh, let's talk about the the relay. So the relay is a little bit. There's a little bit more to say about the relay. So first of all, um, I I like you know these types of relays because uh, I think they're easy to work with. So the connection here, you know, this is where you feed five volts. This is a five volt relay. You feed five volts into the relay. Uh, let me see if I can turn a light on so I can see what I'm doing. It's a little better. You feed 5 volts into the relay, and then this is, you know, negative 5 volts. So basically, this is going to your power supply. It's coming off the 5 volt side of the power supply, and it's connecting to common. So, plus 5 volts minus five volts, that powers the relay. Then this third wire right here, this is actually what's switching it. And this is connected to, come all the way over here, this is connected to uh, OC8, OC8. So what this, what this does is when you trigger, when you trigger that uh, output, which in this case is flood coolant, what it's trying to do is return, it's trying to return the positive 5 volts to ground. So that's why this is a black wire. So what it's doing when you, when you switch that output, it's completing the connection to common, basically. 
So you have to make sure, and this is why I like these relays. If I can zoom in. These relays have little jumpers on them where they can be, they can switch high or they can switch low. That's what this does. So right now, this relay is set to switch low. So what it wants to do when it sees this connection to, to common, it triggers the relay. And that's pretty much how you want to wire up these outputs. So all these, these outputs, they, they want to return the voltage to common. And that looks like this in the wizard. So that's uh, OC8, output 8, and I have it set to flood. And uh, that's it. That's all you have to do. <sighs> all right, so we have our e-stop, our limit switch. We talked about the relay. Um, now let's talk about the encoder really quick. The encoder is actually really easy to wire up. So I am not going to go into all the details of wiring up encoders. There are videos on the Centroid website on this. Marty CNC Garage has videos on how to do this. I pretty much did whatever I saw Marty do on his videos and it just worked perfectly. I used uh, the cable that I bought from or that came from Centroid. Um, you, can, you can buy this cable from Centroid and it's very reasonably priced. Um, I would, I would get, get it from them just because it's, it's easy to get it from them and it works. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to go into the details of how to wire up, wire these up. Basically, there, there are eight connections and they are labeled on the wiring diagram how to do it. Uh, you can see it. It's right here. It's, it's P10. And you pretty much, you just, you make the connections and you plug it in. And then you come over here to spindle setup and you say spindle encoder yes. And like that's all you have. Oh, well, there's one other thing. You have to give it the counts. So this is a 2000 line encoder which means it generates 8,000 pulses per revolution. So that's pretty standard. I think you'll find most of the encoders you look at are going to be like that. So it's a 2,000 line encoder. Each line gives you four pulses, so it's an 8,000 pulse uh, per revolution. And that's it. That's all you have to do to get the uh, spindle feedback working. Uh, all right, finally, let's talk about wiring up the drives. So the way that this works, the first thing you want to do, you need, you need five volts. So you want to bring five volts from your power supply, right? And you want to feed all the plus stuff on your drives. So you can see pulse, pulse plus, direction plus, enable plus are all getting jumpered together with five volts. All the positive, all the positive sides of the drive inputs get fed five volts. And you can see that's how all three of my drives are. They're getting five volts through these red wires. Then the yellow wire is, we'll call that, it's pulse minus, or we'll call that step minus. The white wire is direction minus, and the blue wire is enable minus. And so we got yellow is step, white is direction, blue is enable. Then what you do is you come over here, and you look at this side of your acorn board, and you can see you got uh, basically axis four, axis three, axis two, axis one. And they are labeled. Um, so you'll see ST1, I think DR1, and EN1. Let me try to get that on so you can see it. You know, step one, direction one, enable one. Step two, direction two, enable two. Step three, direction three, enable three. Uh, pretty much, that's it's that straightforward. So, you, uh, like I said, you feed 
5 volts to everything that's labeled plus. Everything gets fed 5 volts, positive 5 volts, positive 5 volts. And then you're returning, you're returning to the board, and that's how it triggers everything. The setup in the wizard is under axis configuration, and it is pretty easy. You just tell it axis 1 is x, 2 is y, 3 is z. I'm not using 4. Um, right now, I have my drive set to um, 4,000 pulses per revolution, which is pretty cool. I really like that. The uh, X and Y, it requires 6.35 revolutions per inch, because I'm in inch units right now. So 6.35 revolutions per inch for X and Y, 5.08 for Z. So my X and Y are 4 millimeter pitch. My Z is a five millimeter pitch. So that's pretty much how you, you just do the conversion. Um, I have some backlash comp thrown in there. And then you, you give your, your jog speed. So I have my fast jog set to 100 inches a minute, my slow jog set to 30 inches a minute, and my max rate set to 120 inches a minute. Uh, I actually am pretty sure I could run these a lot faster, but I, I have them at 120 because that's fast enough for me. Uh, acceleration, deceleration. This is basically, you, you plug the, this in, I believe that you know, the, the unit here is in seconds. So this is, this is going to control how quickly your axes stop and reverse. So you just kind of have to play with that a little bit to see what works for your machine. Down here, you can reverse the directions. You know, if you, for whatever reason, you need to reverse the direction the motor spins, you just toggle this from no to yes. And down here is uh, drive enable delay. So I have this set up uh, with the enable connections on the drives. So if I hit E stop, it disables the drives. And then when you, uh, you jog them again for the first time, this is just a little delay that. Uh, well, you'll see when you go to jog, you press the button and you wait 250 milliseconds and then it, it turns the drives on. It's like a safety feature. Right now I have it set to simple home. That means it's not using limit switches. If I put it to home switch, home to switch, it would use limit switches. So simple home, you're just going to jog it to marks and call it zero. Home to switch, it's going to look for the limit switches. So I'm going to leave it on simple home right now because I don't have the limit switches mounted on the machine. Homing direction, um, if I put this on home to switch, then these become active. You can uh, change the either home in the positive or home in the negative direction. So that's cool. Um, homing sequence, you know, you tell it the order in which you want it to home. So right now it's going to home Z, then Y, then X, you know, one, two, three, which is the way you want to do it. Uh, travel limits, I have those all set to zero, but this is how you would set the positive and negative, negative limits of your uh, machine travel. So these are, you know, kind of like your soft limits, I guess you would say. Um, so you can tell the machine, you know, where it should look for the endpoint of each axis. Uh, fast probe rate, slow probe rate, I'm not using that, so I'm not going to talk about that right now. Uh, okay, so... I think we covered pretty much everything. Oh, here, this is important. Underneath the advanced tab, this is where you can uh, invert your stepper motor controls. So for my drives, I had to invert everything. And for some reason, my one of my drives is weird. I have to invert the step. I don't know why. I think it's a defective drive. But if I invert step, it works fine. Uh, that's why that's different. This is where you would do axis pairing if you're on a router with like two motors for y-axis. Um, I don't need to do that. And I have the step rate set to 200,000 steps per second, which seems to work really good for me. So there you go. Um, that is how I hooked everything up here so far. And I can tell you, I'm really impressed with how, how super easy this is. Um, it's very, very straightforward and to the point. When you're done, you write the settings, saves the settings, you close the wizard, you open up mill 12, and everything 
we'll be there. There we go. We're working. All right, well, I hope uh, that video was enjoyable. Um, hopefully that'll help you make some of your connections as you're, you know, working with your acorn board. Um, just please remember, always be safe and double check everything you do. If you're not sure what you're doing, ask for help from someone who does. And um, thanks for watching. Have a great day.